Hi, church family. I hope you're having a great day. I hope this video finds you doing well. Today, I want to talk to us about our joy. How is your joy meter? Is it full? Is it low? Um, you know, the challenges that we face as Christians is we're humans. And sometimes the things of this world get us down. This week, gas prices bumped up again. And, you know, I get thinking about that. Oh, my goodness, how much is my gas bill going to be this month? Um, the things in this world can uh, sometimes uh, help us feel more excited and sometimes help us feel less excited. But God, he cares about us and he has prepared all of eternity for us and he wants us to have a personal relationship with him. And when we go back to the book of Genesis, we see that God, when he created humanity, created us and gave us things that were pleasing to us. Look at Genesis 2, 15 and 16 with me. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden and to work it and to care for it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. And then he drops down 18, he said, it was not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. So you see, God didn't want the, God didn't want Adam to be alone and to, to not be fully fulfilled. And so he made a helper suitable for him. You know, uh, one of the things that I've been doing with the small group of people on Wednesday night over the last six weeks is uh, doing a study called Follow Me, written by David Platt. He starts off at the beginning, uh, the first chapter is on our call to follow Christ. He talks about it's more than just walking an aisle and filling out a piece of paper and going through the baptismal waters and then living our lives as if nothing had ever happened. He talks about how it's a complete and total surrender to him. He talked about how God wants to transform us and bring us more into the image of Christ. But the interesting thing is, in the third chapter, he talks about joy, that our joy should be fulfilled in God. He, he wrote this, and I want to read it to you. Uh, he wrote this about Jonathan Edwards. Many considered him to be America's greatest theologian, and he was never one to pull punches. And, and um, so uh, David said this about John, uh, Jonathan Edwards. Edwards disliked the way some churches and Christians of his day had become carried away with highly emotional worship services that were devoid of God's word. He also disliked the way other churches and Christians claimed to hold tightly to the word of God while their worship lacked any real emotion. Edwards believed it was a mistake to attempt any separation between doctrinal truth and legitimate emotion. In fact, he claimed it was impossible to have one without the other. And then he quotes these words from Jonathan Edwards himself. Edwards said, Our eternal delights, our earthly pleasures, our ambition and our reputation, our human relationship. For all these things, our desires are eager, our appetites are strong, our love is warm and affectionate. When it comes to these things, our hearts are tender and sensitive, deeply impressed, easily moved, much concerned and greatly engaged. But Edward goes on. But when it comes to spiritual matters, how dull we feel, how heavy and hard our hearts, we can sit and hear of the infinite height and length and breadth and love of God in Christ Jesus, of his giving his infinite dear son, and yet sit there cold and unmoved. If we are going to be excited about anything, shouldn't it be our spiritual lives? Is there anything more inspiring, more exciting, more lovable and desirable in heaven or on earth than the gospel of Jesus Christ? And then David said, according to Edwards, faith should fuel feeling. Intellectual knowledge of God naturally and necessarily involves emotional feeling for God. In other words, those of us who submit to God as our ultimate authority should also delight in him as our father. You know, I want to encourage you. One of the challenges is many people don't fully understand what it means to be adopted. But do you understand that when God adopted us as his children, he adopted us. He gave us his name. We are his heirs. Everything that he has is ours. And when we settle for lesser things, lesser pleasures, the sensual desires of this world, the, the cars and the houses and, and the jobs and the vacations and all the things of this world, they leave us feeling empty. But when we truly believe in God as our Lord and Savior and we accept what he has for us, the joy and the fulfillment, the excitement that he provides us is great. It's lasting and steep. 
I know there are still going to be challenges. You know, when we lose loved ones, when we um, go through uh, physical health issues and other things like that, there are emotional challenges that we go through. But the joy is that God promises to be with us in the midst of it and to bring us through it. Church family, I hope you're having a great week. I look forward to seeing you this weekend. I love you and I hope you have a great day.